Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is my all-terrain RC paddle boat. In today's video, I'm going to try to turn a toy boat I picked up at the dollar store into an all-terrain paddle boat. The idea is that we'll make the paddle wheels durable enough to not only carry the boat through water, but also drive on them on land. I say drive on land, but all I really want to be able to do is to drive from the shore into the water and then climb back out. I also want to put in the water cannon because that would be really cool. Now I'm not 100% sure how all of this is going to work out or even if it will, but I'm very excited to find out. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to need before we can do anything is of course a boat. I picked up this one at the dollar store for $1 and although it is cheaply made, it should serve our purposes quite well. So to get started, I'm going to remove this top and cut two small holes, one on each side of the ship's hull, just large enough to fit one of my 600 RPM motors into. I'm going to cut the holes about 5 or 6 inches from the back and have them be as high up as possible while still being flush with the top of the boat. Just like this. Now we're going to want to cut out a piece of plastic that reaches from cutout to cutout and that is just wide enough to be able to bolt our motors onto. As you can see, I cut out a relatively thick piece that narrows at the end to fit into the slots, and it has a support at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this into the boat, hot gluing it in place. Then I'm going to take my two 600 RPM motors and mount them one at each side, making sure that they stick out just a little bit extra. For mounts, you could use these little cheap brackets I picked up, link in the description, or you could just hot glue them in place, really whatever you're feeling. That is looking pretty good. On to the paddle wheels. For the paddle wheels, I'm just going to very simply take two three quarter inch long dowels that I have a hole drilled in the center of for the motors to slip into and glue four two inch long pieces around them in a spoke like pattern. I chose two inches because that sticks out by about a quarter to a half inch beneath the ship. So hopefully we should get plenty of traction on water and with any luck on land. I'm going to use super glue for this, but it isn't all that important what type of glue you use because these joints shouldn't get that wet. Here we are. Now you could add more plastic paddles to it if you wanted to, but it should work just fine as it is. We don't want to pop these on just yet, so I'm going to go ahead and put them aside so we can work on the cannon. So for the water cannon, what I want to do is take this water pump and put it in the back of the ship and then hook up an intake tube that sticks through the bottom of the boat. I'll then run a tube from the exhaust up to the front and out of the cannon. But there is one big flaw with that design, and that is after we hook everything up, we won't be able to take the top off because the tubes will be holding it all down. So how I'm going to work around this is I'm going to cut the top part into two pieces, the front cannon and then the back. Then drill a hole through the cannon and the base of the cannon large enough for a tube to go through. Drill another hole through the bottom back of the hull large enough for the intake tube to go through. Then just hook up all the tubes and hot glue everything in place, especially the tubes themselves. However, fair warning, you are first probably going to have to cut out two small holes on the front plate for the motors to poke through. But that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So let's get to tubing. That is starting to look pretty cool if I may say so myself. Now when we put these water wheels on and they start spinning up, they're going to take the water and throw it up into the air which will get our boat and electronics and motors wet and it'll just be the end of the world. So what we need to do to stop that is build wheel wells of sorts to put over the motors that will stop the water from being thrown up. To do this, I just cut out two pieces of plastic that very roughly match the pattern of the wheel. I'm then going to glue them, one on each side, making sure they're centered with the motors. Then cut out and glue on inch wide flaps that'll actually stop the water from being thrown. Just like that. That's actually not as ugly as I thought it would be. I am going to add a cross support from wheel well to wheel well to try to make it a little bit more sturdy. And then maybe put some electrical tape or something over them to help them stand out. Or 
voila wale okay so i just went and did a float test with this and it looks like it's having trouble balancing and although it is not quite there just yet the front is almost too heavy so what i'm going to do to help lift up the front and make the whole thing overall more stable is take this foam strip i got from a pool noodle and glue it onto the bow of the ship While we're at it, we might as well also add a few pieces to the sides for safe measure. As you can see, although these foam strips aren't that thick, they should still be able to add quite a bit of stability. So now after we pop on the paddle wheels, all that's left to do is to drop in the electronics. First, I'll plug in our two brushed speed controllers that control our brushed paddle wheel motors. Then I'll drop in a third speed controller and connect this one up to the water pump, making sure to solder all three of the speed controller's battery import cables together so we only have to plug in one battery. After that, we plug in all of our speed controllers into our receiver. I'm using channels 1 through 3 in case anyone's curious. Drop in, then plug in our 11.1 volt 500 milliamp battery. Then just pop on the back of the boat. And with that, the boat is finally complete. So let's finally get out and test this thing. Well, actually, on second thought, every ship needs a captain. Now let's go test it. Okay, so this thing's actually quite the beast when it comes to water. It just has a little bit of trouble driving on land if the terrain's too sharp. Who would have guessed a boat would have trouble driving on land? Overall, I think it's a pretty decent design, and with a little work, I'm quite confident we could perfect it. So with that being said, if you guys would like me to build a version 2 and really try to perfect the design, please let me know in the comments down below. Or even if you don't want me to, please let me know as well. Really, just whatever floats your boat. And so there you have it, how to build an all-terrain RC paddle boat. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.